And so I, I want to begin um, with uh, with this number uh, fifty five, which for me, you know, the the most significant uh, aspect of the way that I use <clears throat> this number fifty five. Uh, doesn't relate to a historical moment or to um, an act of, 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 of decoding into um, a set of letters or references, but uh, to the, the mathematical significance of the number itself. And, um, you know, the, the fact that it's a, a Fibonacci number, the fact that it's... Uh, uh, the fact that it's a triangular number, which relates to the coordination of uh, numerical values with uh, the set of objects that um, can be arranged as an uh, equilateral triangle, uh, beginning with the base uh, from the, that numerical value. So uh, this is described by the following figure, where... Um, you know, here the t value is equal to five. So if you count uh, the uh, the objects on the base, you should have five objects: one, two, three, four, five. And the value uh, of the the, the set uh, that encompasses the equilateral triangle is fifteen. So there are fifteen you know circles in this set. Here's the t value is six. Uh, one, two, three, four. Five, six, and the total uh, amount of uh, value for the objects constituting the triangle is 21. Now, what makes the 55 for me interesting is that um, it's 10. So the base is 10, as is uh, the base of our counting number system, which is speculated, you know, is is because we have five fingers. Um, on each hand with a, a, a total of 10, and it um, was easy to count. Now, counting is um, an obstacle for me because I have a difficulty um, sequencing uh, numbers, uh, and, you know, people who have paid attention to the work that I've presented on this particular, you know, discussion and, um, and uh, representation-making... Um, platform will uh, will already be aware so um, so the 55 was was interesting to me for a number of reasons and because uh, the, the the value number of this particular t10 right which is uh, 55 isn't you know readily available to consciousness as as a diagram uh, in the same way that uh, for example, a T2 would be, right? Like, so if I say T2, it's pretty easy for you to uh, visually conceive of that figure and to represent the numerical value as a 3. You might be able to do this with, with, with 3, 4, you know, and 5 as well. And, um, but to visually uh, um, imagine and 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 uh, cogitate and count the possibilities of uh, 55 at this stage, at least for me, is um, considerably difficult. Um, probably nearly impossible if it's given to the um, the part of uh, intellectual ability that, for me, you know, involves uh, sequencing and counting. So I would have to be able to see the figure, and then I would have to be able to uh, probably break it up into units and multiply, or to conceive of it as a set of relationships between, um, you know, the functional value of angles and, and, uh, and how um, those distribute the, the value of the quantity of, 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 of the individual items stacked within um, those angle relationships. And, and, and that's a very different way of conceiving, right, this, this problem uh, than it would be if, if one were to consider counting it. So that's, in, you know, part of the value that, 
it represents as as a figure to me uh, in relationship, you know, to my my peculiar or particular um, position as a uh, cognitive subject and a subject with, you know, um, this uh, potentially, you know, significant limitation or, or difference in the way that I organize sets and of reality. And um, here's actually an equation for the way that, you know, one could construct a formula for a triangular number. And then, you know, what I like about this this complicated um, mathematical problem is that, you know, it, it distributes itself, you know, fairly easily in, in graphic form. And it relates to stacking. And stacking is another one of the, uh, the ways that I uh, represent. And, um, you know, uh, whether that be uh, in stacking stones or in, you know, in stacking logs or uh, stacking other kinds of material sets. Um, that's, that, that's like uh, a, a kind of uh, non-skipping stone version of, of the way that the Fibonacci's are formed themselves. So it's the hands version of... Uh, of the golden ratio in a, in a certain sense, right? Uh, and uh, the relationship to the, the hand and um, to counting is, is, is significant to me because um, numerical s sequencing is uh, one of my difficulties, one of the cognitive difficulties that I have. Uh, so this number 55, is fascinating to me as a, a symbol of, uh, you know, the way that uh, my cognitive positionality has uh, marginalized me socially, you know, for my entire life, and that that uh, that this positionality has, uh, you know, obstructed my ability to to acquire and um, and keep, you know. Um, jobs, uh, to um, participate in social media, to uh, engage in, uh, in, 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 in surprisingly numerous ways. You know, it has um, um, created uh, obstacles in, um, and, and not just, you know, my inability to sequence numbers, but my, you know, inability to um, recall sequences of numbers and uh, my inability to uh, write, my inability to spell, you know, all of these things. And, and so in, in a way, the, the reclamation of this number relates to that issue um, by virtue of uh, the structural mathematical features of the number itself. And then, you know, because it relates to uh, the Fibonacci sequence, it relates to a lot of other conceptual elements uh, that belong to this idea of uh, the golden ratio and phi and, um, you know, um, ideas of uh, the order of uh, natural structures in, in the universe that, uh, that belong to this pattern and, and the, the micro and macrocosm of, um, of the spiral that, you know, exists, you know, both in the form of the Nautilus shell, well, no, not just both, but in the form of the Nautilus shell and um, and the sunflower, but also in uh, in the cosmos in the very you know form of uh, spiral galaxies themselves. Um, my uh, my tea water is ready, so we'll just take a walk over to the tea. You have to uh, imagine that uh, that numerical value. 55 is still what you're looking at and not a, a teapot. Um, but, you know, I'm not unaware. Well, I mean, there are other, you know, historical markers that belong to it, you know. And, and these, these markers could inhibit my ability to use this number. Well, you can't use that number even though it represents 
the way that you've been marginalized by the society because it also also represents this number 1955 or it also represents something else and i'm i'm very much aware that it represents uh the birth date of the publication of uh Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass which is actually something that i wanted to bring uh to that number The, the coffee is, uh, or the uh, teapot is hot, and I'm trying to, with one hand, remove the top so that I can put more water, so, because I need a little bit more water for this tea. And it's hard to remove, or was hard to remove, because now I'm pouring the water into the teapot. But one of the things that made it difficult was that, you know, I was lifting, it's, it's see, you can hear that it, see it. It's nicely, but to do it with one hand and it was very hot it was difficult. Now it's cooled off a little bit and it's not quite so difficult. Um, so, um, so I wanted the reference to Walt Whitman, and 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 uh, you know one could you know argue that well, referencing the birth date of uh, Leaves of Grass is also referencing uh, Walt, Walt Whitman's later attachment, you know, to um, these uh, uh, ideological, uh, these uh, unsavory ideological um, formulations that he had in relationship to colonialism and and uh, you know his uh, support of colonial projects, you know. Um, of the British Empire in India and elsewhere, and um, and although I I I don't in any way uh, wish to deny that any reference to Walt Whitman um, can isolate or. Um, <coughs> His attachment to those ideologies <clears throat> any more than a reference to Ezra Pound can exclude, uh, you know, his uh, participation in the ideologies of fascism. You know, that that numerical reference, you know, wasn't you know particularly. Uh, intended as as an endorsement of uh, the ideologies of um, Walt Whitman, especially in, you know, the, the later Walt Whitman, but rather like a reference to the way that I had seen a certain value in the way that, you know, he worked and wanted to, to bring that into the mix. Um, I'm very eager to get back to my, my number 55, um, but I'm also... A little bit hesitant to do so because I know that there we go the coffee gets ready quicker or the uh, hot water and the tea kettle gets water ready quicker on the second round when I don't have as much water in it so we're just about ready to go back to the image All right, so that's that's a that's a beginning with uh, the significance of fifty five. Now all of the all of the Fibonacci numbers are significant in my work, but but this one in particular, and also because of uh, fiber, you know, from uh, watership down, and then um, and I've talked about you know fiber from watership down, the visionary rabbit, and um, and the doubling of of five in in this set. You know, I, I, I guess is uh, is an image of uh, uh, my relationship to to that uh, the, that naming. So you know, if you've read a Watership Down, uh, you, you know that um, that in this representation, rabbits who are anthro anthropomorphized uh, in 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 the manner of um, all good. Uh, fables that rabbits uh, 
can only count up to five, and that fiver is uh, the the runt of the the litter and, and and the last one in the litter, the last in a sense, and so the last is uh, is is portrayed as as this number five. So it means you know he is is the last, or uh, five is, is 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 like the conceptual limit, almost like infinity in a certain sense, uh, terminal. Right. Uh, if if you if you had a c conceptual designation of, of of an infinitude that was terminal in uh, in in a hum as a human construct, this is what you know f this five would represent. So it's a very like interesting number. And for me, like this like counting thing that I I mentioned uh, uh, about its characteristics. I mean, you can you can look the number up on Wikipedia. You can find other you know. Um, aspects of it you know it also refers to um it, it's it's one of those um numbers that refer to uh, a, a number of different celestial phenomena you know including uh, a spiral galaxy that's uh, designated with this number so all of that going into the the mix and then you know the reference um like i had said you know not not uh, not intended to either um, unqualif unqualifiedly endorse uh, the colonialism of a uh, figure like Walt Whitman, but you know, but not really intended as um, marking that uh, ideological and political, you know aspect of his work as that element that, that I was, you know, interested in. And I guess this is a way in which syntax and grammar and content and ideology don't always um, sync. You know, for example, um, here's, here's another set. And this set, like, relates to the 55 set as well. Now, so because I had this relationship to... 55, I became interested in the EE, because if you translate the fives into letters, you know, you the E is the fifth letter of the alphabet. So I got interested in these, these, uh, these E's, and also, I guess, because uh, if you're interested in different language systems, the E's, to me, you know, looked like uh, Greek thetas with these little gaps, and I kind of, I, I kind of liked that as well. But when I was formulating the idea uh, of an absurdist theater, you know, based in part on um, on uh, uh, Anthony Artaud's uh, first theater, the Alfred Jarry theater, you know, I had I had tried to think about. Uh, these different um, combinations of uh, items that I could bring into naming uh, the absurdist theater, and I had always thought of E. E. Cummings as an absurdist, and uh, you know maybe I was I was wrong. Um, I, I I think he gets designated in a lot of different ways, and that was one of the ways of bringing um, these different elements in was 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 syntax, right? Okay, so. Artaud had the uh, Artaud had the Alfred uh, Jarry Theater, and then I thought of uh, Alfred E. Newman, and uh, which was the Mad Magazine thing, which was another absurdist thing. And then uh, I thought of E. E. Cummings, which brought my my fifty five into the mix, and so and it also brought in this this early play of his called Him that I was like impressed with, and probably even before I knew you know much about you know the offensive language that uh, Cummings used, uh, uh, um, and uh, the racializations that you know he made in in some of his work that just you know admittedly extremely offensive and I want to address that too in, in different ways but we'll focus like why why the syntax came in and how like there's not always like a sync between you know the the, the grammatical formulation and the and the compass of the ideology right like I would never have like made the Alfred uh, I, 
it's interesting because I never would have thought of like making the 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 Alfred um, Ezra Pound Neumann you know theater or, or something like that well I had always thought of Ezra Pound as a fascist in fact I never even read Ezra Pound other than like the snippets of Images poems, but I never read the cantos because I was never interested in him, and I thought he wasn't much of a scholar. And um, his understanding of, myth of mythology, you know, like compared with, I mean, whatever the political difficulties are with HD, compared with HD, he wasn't really much of a of a, of a uh, thinker on uh, the classics either, right? We had a very cursory understanding of of uh, myth, of epic, of even you know I would argue. I mean, I'm sure people would argue against my reading, but even a, even really a cursory understanding of uh, the idea of what a canto was. <laughs> but uh, like if, if you know, I mean, like comparing it to like the sophisticated, I you know. I'm also like not ideologically invested in Dante, but I do recognize like the sophisticated apparatus of the way that, you know, both um, the rhyme structures and the interlocking relationships between the, the, the canto numbers in as you cross like various thresholds between Inferno and Purgatorio and the other, you know, realm that, um, that often gets excluded from from the reading, right? Because it's kind of boring, proud to do so. But um, but you know the, the the play between these multiple levels, you know, where you could say like as an analogy, like you know, with music, you know, like there's there's uh, there's treble, there's bass, there's a lot of mid range, there's a lot going on, you know, in all these relationships. Well, I didn't see that going on. In, in 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 the brief you know look that I had at Pound and wasn't so wasn't interested in it so I never read the cantos I was never interested in Pound in that way and I always sort of rejected that when he did come into my work which was you know when I would do more imagistic stuff it was always pretty critical or at least like I I thought that was pretty obvious although some people maybe didn't get that but um but I was always, you know, pretty critical of the, of the ideology surrounding him. E. e. Cummings, I I didn't uh, I didn't even know about uh, some of this work that uh, that's more obviously offensive until until much later later. And 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 the question is, is like at that point, do you do you change it? Like I could have. Neumann and Newman was there because I needed a way of bringing the absurdity of popular culture and the Alfred Alfred E. Newman to the um, the the mathematician you know uh, von Neumann and and the von Neumann universe set theory that I was working with. So did I throw out the fifty five in the form of the E E because because I've you know learned that. Uh, E. e. Cummings was, you know, apparently, I mean, it's, you know, apparently, um, obviously very offensive, you know, in certain racialized language and descriptions in his work, even in his published work, and, um, and, 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 and pretty clearly um, unapologetic about it. But I, I, I didn't, and, um, and, and again, it, it's not an endorsement of, of that. But it's one of these situations where the the syntax and uh, something about um, the way that I perceived the early work and the way that uh, images were produced on the page um, that I wanted to bring into uh, the title of that that theater and. Um, And you know it's it's interesting because uh, uh, it seems to me that uh, like anyone who's ever really like seriously listened to Indeterminacy by John Cage, you know, it seems to me should be like extremely offended by uh, the way that. Uh, his uh, uh, 
impersonations of uh, these Asian stereotypes uh, are rendered in his readings of these uh, sort of fabricated Chinese poems. And uh, I won't uh, repeat uh, by impersonating Cage, impersonating these uh, Chinese subjects reading these these poems, but um, it's extraordinarily offensive, right? And and yet, it's not problematic for people to refer to Cage like um, like in 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 poetry circles. It, you know, he's presented like completely un unproblematically, right? And and. And I'm not saying that, you know, Cage is uh, necessarily a racist or necessarily a colonialist, but there, there's that aspect there, right? So, you know, I've often tried to situate my work in ways that, that foreground those, those um, gaps, right, maybe in... Um, in the the art artists thinking about exclusion or inclusion or imitation or like what prejudices and biases those exclusions and and um, stereotypes you know present and and if you if you listen to the indeterminacies you know I, I think you know it should it should come across you know fairly well as well as you know Cage's like limited understanding of certain uh, principles in um, you know, not just Chinese, you know, but, you know, but Asian aesthetics in general. I mean, and this is like, uh, this is like a, a fairly familiar form of modernism, right? I mean, it's there in, uh, in Pound, like a, a reductive, limited understanding. It's there in, uh, Kent the Rex Roth. It continues to be there in, um, uh, the anthropological work of certain anthologizers that, um, you know, this like romanticism never really dies. And and, uh, and 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 the colonial aspects of it, you know, never never really die either. But but for some, you know, they're kind of like forgiven. I guess they they were in the like right set or whatever. But you never really hear like critiques of of colonialist and 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 racist, you know, uh, uses of form and uh, and imitation in Cage. And so I I just you know thought that I think that's really interesting. And I felt that it was, you know, my job, for whatever reason, to call attention to those discrepancies. Just like, you know, um, you know, recently I like uh, I published an image of, you know, Eleanor Anton in blackface, and it's not like considered, you know, fair or polite, like to, to call attention to certain artists' um, insensitivities you know, to racial and cultural stereotypes, whereas it's, it's, it's sort of like okay and accepted to do so in other instances. And, um, and, and I, for whatever reason, I have felt that it was my, <laughs> not necessarily, you know, singularly me, but, you know, that I was part of uh, the set of individuals whose responsibility it was to call attention to those discrepancies, right? So, you know, I, I, I made this work and I talked about presence and absence, uh, you know, in, in certain uh, collections. And, uh, and I talked about, uh, I didn't talk about it. I just showed it like, you know, the difference between showing and, and telling in the act of writing, you know, and um, so I said a little, I'm, I'm saying now, but I hope it won't be taken as a justification of or a failure to recognize like the problematic uh, aspects that you know even something as simple as the number fifty five possesses because of these uh, racially biased histories and systems of oppression and exclusion and uh, the marginalization of, of human subjects and the um, 
the ingrained right prejudices and, and biases of uh, of a culture, you know, and and, um, and and so you know, for me, like it raises this interesting question. It's like, well, when when this completely unfolded and this understanding unfolded then why oh this means that uh something else that i'm working on has completed itself then why wouldn't you remove it at that time and i guess i felt sort of like the way that i feel about dr seuss is like well ex expunging the the work you know from from the publications and like pretending like that the the racism never happened in a way is 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 worse right like i understand why the dr seuss estate did it because they wanted to clean up his act it's like like later you know um you might have this you might have this attitude that was more or less accepted at a certain time like in the 50s or whatever or like it was okay to say uh you know um to make mar remarks about communists because um you know, um, you're in this place, like say you're in um, Hungary and, um, and Chinese, you know, or Chinese, and, and, and Soviet communism is really a, a factor in, in the oppression of, uh, of your state and uh, the, the, th you know, the oppression through which your state organizes itself well this is very different from um the way that uh american communists you know and uh, socialists were persecuted um in the mccarthy era right so so um it, it's variable and uh and and it you know I was thinking about it, you know, raising these questions, like, um, so, because, because the United States is a racist country, because, um, because of all of this grain of the culture, uh, am I still allowed to use this number or, you know, these letters in inscribing uh, significance and, 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 and reference. Well, the EE -E could, like, easily be taken out. And But I thought about it, like, again, in terms of, like, well, there's something wrong with that. Like, there's something wrong with uh, the Dr. Seuss estate wanting to remove the... the offensive material to clean up his act, right? It, it, um, it should be, you know, recorded in history. And, and for me, this is not the same as having like these racist monuments up that were, you know, uh, constructed much later in, 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 in the South as an ideology and as a, a, a way of uh, producing hate, hate speech and thought, right? And, in the public place. Um, I'm not, you know, advocating for uh, Dr. Seuss's race, racist um, texts. Um, I'm just advocating that it, it's, their presence isn't something that we should, you know, forget. And, um, you know, so this, I don't know, this is really an interesting question for me in relationship to the Alfred E.E. E. Neumann theater experience. Um, it seems to me that something would be lost uh, if I translated it into the Alfred 55 Neumann theater experience um but i'll you know i'll continue to consider it uh as a question and i like that it 
it comes up as a question. Um, and, and what it means in terms of responsibility, you know, uh, as a question, rather than, you know, ignoring it. You know, so for example, if, you know, recently, like I pointed out that on, on, uh, on the blog, you know, of uh, someone I've, I've known a long time, there's a, a, a significant omission, you know, of, um, of the work of uh, African Americans, and uh, and and that's it's not addressed as an issue of uh, of theme or, or or discourse or 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 uh, part of the content of the project, and uh, and so that gap, you know, that omission to me is is something that who's who, you know calling attention to it is uh, of value, right? And um, you know, just like calling attention to uh, ableist discrimination strategies, you know, on the part of evaluation methods and in other elements of our culture is is very useful. And and I think, you know, too, with uh, with John Cage, um, a, a reading of John Cage's. Orientalism and uh, racial stereotype and oversimplification of uh, ideas in uh, Asian aesthetics is, is, is really long overdue, as is long overdue uh, an evaluation, uh, almost a uh, scientific mathematical evaluation of, of the concept of chance and aleatory work in the arts and uh, you know from a, you know from a, a, a post uh, Einsteinian you know perspective on what um, on what what chance could you know possibly mean in a universe as complex and sophisticated as ours so I, I'm interested in, uh, you know, this interrogation, you know, from, you know, maybe beginning with, uh, you know, further look at, you know, this particular set of uh, numbers, the five and the five, and exploring, uh, you know, you know, other, other kinds of relationships that one might have to this set that wouldn't necessarily you know, lead to this translation and that might allow me to rename, you know, if I, if I consider it um, pertinent enough, you know, rename the uh, Alfred E.E. E. Neumann theater experience 